Hello, I'm Dan Oliver, <coughs> Chairman of the uh, Governmental Affairs Committee of Chamber of Commerce. We're pleased to have you here with us this evening and welcome you and thank you for coming. This is an important evening. We'll have the opportunity to hear from candidates for our county commissioner seats and uh, it'll be a great, great evening to get additional information to make your decisions. The Governmental Affairs Committee uh, works with government agencies to ensure that issues that are important to our biz business community uh, have a voice. We also work with uh, following legislative issues that may impact local businesses and trying to be sure that that voice is heard not just in the local community but at the state level as well. We promote partnerships between business and government, putting our military bases and also the education community that, that helps ensure we have a good workforce and uh, very strong. We also sponsor, uh, along with uh, private sponsors, the forums. And these forums are, are intended to deal with issues that impact the entire community. And certainly there's no bigger issue for us to be well informed on as to knowing those folks that we're about to elect to our elected offices and, for, and serve multi-year terms that determine our future. We want to thank the candidates for the Board of Commissioners that are participating tonight. We thank you for being here, and we thank you for uh, putting yourselves out for service to our county and to the citizens of our county. We would like to recognize our media sponsor, uh, Jacksonville Daily News, as well as the city of Jacksonville for this excellent facility that they provide us the opportunity to hold these events in, and also the uh, Jacksonville, city of Jacksonville's media services team for broadcasting this event throughout the county and for multiple days. Our corporate sponsor this evening is Duke Energy. At this time, I'd ask you to help me welcome to the podium Bob Dupuy, who is Duke Energy's federal accounts executive, and he also serves as the chamber's uh, division chair for military affairs. Bob? Well, greetings. Uh, and a special greetings and thank you to the, to the folks that are sitting up here this evening uh, that want to be part of defining uh, the county's future. I, I really admire you for that and thank you. Um, on behalf of all of the employees uh, at Duke Energy here in Jacksonville, Onslow County, uh, I'd love to, to welcome you and say thanks to those media sponsors that we have, the city, uh, the Daily News, and especially our partnership with the Chamber. Um, I don't think I can say it any better than Dan did, so I'm not going to, but I want to introduce this evening our moderator for the event. Our moderator is Elliot Potter. Uh, Elliot has been moderating these forums forever. And he is a veteran journalist uh, who served as editor for the Daily News for more than 34 years. He is now co-host for the Rayford Brown and Friends show on Thunder Country 96.3 FM. Elliot, it's all yours, sir. You know, those highly paid guys at CNN and... Fox News. They didn't want to handle a, a panel that was this size. They had to cull it down, but we're going we're gonna to knock it out tonight. I think we're, if we follow the rules and, and, and I can keep up with what's going on, I think we'll have a, a really uh, informative and enjoyable evening. Um, thanks for participating. I will join Bob in, in thanking you all um, for being here tonight. Um, it does take uh, quite a bit to step out not only to run for office, but then to put your views out there and, and see what happens. Um, this is the field for the Republican nomination for the county commissioners. There are five seats available this year. And uh, so from these 13, there will be five nominees on the GOP side who will go into the general election. Only the Republicans have a contested field, and that is why we only have Republicans participating um, in this forum tonight. We have invited, and they are attending, uh, our, the two Democratic uh, candidates who will be on the ballot in November, uh, Mr. Donald Klinger and Mr. Ernie Wright. Uh, but they will not participate in the questioning tonight because there is no Democratic forum. So we want to make that clear and sort of explain how things sort of are transpiring here. Um, this is the Chamber's forum, but it's also a People's forum. 
Um, in the past, we've been able to take questions from the, but, uh, but this year, because we're going to have such a limited amount of time uh, to deal with the questions that we have, we're not going to do that. We did take some questions in advance that I have tried to work into the, to, to the questions that we have, but we're not going to have live questioning uh, from the audience. Um, now, we're going to continue this round-robin format uh, with, the, uh, with the, only, uh, the only little nick and niche in that will be uh, the rebuttal rounds. Each of you have two cards, two yellow cards in front of you. And um, so when we go through the questions, you'll have 60 seconds to answer uh, each question. And this timer will let you know when you have 15 seconds left. Um, and at that point, I would ask that you... When your time runs out, I would ask you to end your sentence and uh, th that you're on and, and so that we can move forward. <laughs> you will have an opportunity if you want to continue your remarks or if you would like to address something that you've heard along the way, you will have an opportunity to rebuttal. You would have two cards to use during the course of the evening, two rebuttals to use. Those are 30-second rebuttals, okay, and, you will, and the light will show up when you've got 10 seconds to go, okay? You have an opening statement that's a minute. You will have a closing statement that's a minute. So um, I think I've about covered everything. I would ask that you uh, address your remarks to the general audience. I would ask that the audience, we got a lot of folks here, so we're going to try to keep it down. No applause until the end of the program. We just, you know, we like to keep this thing moving. And, uh, and, and so and the way we're going to start the questions, we're going to draw a name out of the bowl. <laughs> And that person will start the answer, the responses, and then we'll be moving in both directions as the, in, during the course of the night so that you don't always follow, that uh, Mr. Knapp doesn't always follow Ms. Eichner, for example, in the course of the, in, in the, course of the question, uh, response. Um, I think I've covered it all. If I haven't, we'll just make it up along the way. All right? Okay. So you ready to go with the, we're going to have, who's going to start off our opening statements? Mr. Eric Whitfield, and we will proceed to my right, your left. So that means Eric will, uh, Mr. Whitfield will start, and it will go down to uh, Mr. Bennett and go back through to Mr. Warden. All right, many people have asked me what my uh, platform is, and I really don't have an answer because I don't have a platform. I believe I'm a Republican, and every one of us up here represents the Republican Party, whether we represent it poorly I would represent it with pride. And I'm a candidate that represents the Republican Party in its fullest, and I'm, a, I'm loyal to the North Carolina Republican Party platform, the Onslow County Republican platform, and get this, to the candidate who receives the most votes in the Republican primary, which in our last, our last primary, that was Jack Bright. And I would pledge my loyalty to the, those three categories, the North Carolina Republican Party platform, the Onslow County Republican Party platform, and the candidate who receives the most votes so that we can get more accomplished and be loyal to our party that we all represent. Mr. Bennett? Yes, I want to thank the Chamber for allowing us this opportunity. I just want to tell you, I'm Royce Bennett, and uh, I'm from, uh, I, I was 12 years in the Moorhead City Police Department and law enforcement. I had the, the Shepherd Shop Christian Bookstore here in, in Onslow County for 10 years, and I've been helping people with real estate for 10 years in Onslow County now. Um, my, I'm here because I think it's time to refocus Onslow County. I don't know about you, but my, uh, my property values have fall, fell dramatically in the last six years while my tax rate continues to go up. And I think it's time to refocus the budget. We need to look at, uh, look at ways that we can cut the budget and cut taxes. We need to refocus on listening to our citizens and what the, uh, the desires of the community are. And we need to refocus on having an open and honest conversation in our government. So I'm here to, uh, to refocus Onslow County. Thank you. Mr. Dwight Bletcher. Good evening, everyone. First, I want to say this proudly. I do not want anyone to mistake my passion for aggression. I don't want you to take my answers too aggressively, and I don't want you to think they are very anger or anger that's coming out of me. I'm very passionate about this county. I love this county. I want to stay in this county, and I want to represent the citizens of this county. It's your voice that I'm listening to. 
and I want to do the best I can to give you the candidate and commissioner that you deserve. I thank each and every one of you for coming out this evening, and I want you to know from my wife's point of view that we are happy to call each and every one of you friends and family. Thank you for your time. Mr. Jack Bright. Thank you, Elliot. Elliot um, I am Jack Bright. I'm Oslo County native. Uh, just to give you a little bit of history about my family, uh, my father was born and raised here. My grandfather was born and raised here. My great-grandfather was born and raised here. My great-great-grandfather was born and raised here. So I've got quite an investment in Oslo County. I'm uh, eight years as a county commissioner with broken time, first term uh, and then another term. I'm retired uh, deputy chief of police from Jacksonville Police Department right here for 30 years service. I have uh, been selected in 2012 to serve again as uh, one of your commissioners. I do have uh, property here in Oslo County and I appreciate uh, the chamber putting this on so we can have all the candidates to be heard and let them make a choice on who their next five mm -hmm. commissioners will be. Mr. Paul Buchanan. How are you? Thank everybody for being here. I'm Paul Buchanan. Uh, my wife June's in the audience. I have three daughters and eight grandchildren. I've been a county commissioner for 11 years going on 12. We've done a lot in Onslow County for the last seven years. These board of commissioners that we have for the last seven years have done more than any other commissioner's ever done. The tax increase that everybody keeps putting on us has not taken place in the last three years and will not take place until 2018 when we will look at it again. Right now, we're not going to raise taxes this year, and most of the people are telling us that you're just doing it because it's an election year. That's not so. We made a pledge last two or three years ago not to raise taxes, and we're not going to do that. I'm a former Onslow County Deputy Sheriff. I'm a former Jackson police officer. I work at the college. I retired from the college, and I came back under Dr. Lingle and uh, Sharon McGinnis's advice to ask me to come back and help out in law enforcement. I'm the director of law enforcement for the county. I do all in service training. Thank you. Mr. Gene Innitt. Yes, my name is Gene Innitt. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to say that I'm a, I'm a Christian. I have Christian values. I am uh, a former highway patrolman, served 31 years, well, 30 years with the highway patrol in various places in Onslow, in uh, Onslow County, Duplin, and from Raleigh to actually Ocracoke in those 30 years. I believe what I can bring to the board is, is a new voice for the citizens of Onslow County and a new vision to the Onslow County Board of Commissioners. Thank you. Mr. Yeah. S.D. Jr. Freeman. Yes, sir. That I am. And I would like to thank the Chamber and, and the sponsors for putting this on and you folks for being here tonight. I was raised in Cumberland County and in 1971 I came to Onslow County as a state trooper. After five years of trooper, I entered into private business, which I have, have been quite a while, and I understand budgeting. I have opened, closed, and managed a lot of businesses and worked for a lot of businesses in this county, employing several hundred people. Um, I served as a Swansboro commissioner for four years, and during that time, I served as Onwasa as a director for three years as well. And I understand the importance of govern, government regulations, taxing, spending, and how it affects you and I as private citizens, as, as business people. It is important that we go through the economic development and look for opportunities to increase jobs, and we must improve on our culture and recreation within the county. Thank you. Mr. Good evening, and yes, I am Millionaire Williams, and I'd like to thank my husband for being in the audience this evening. And first and foremost, I thank God for the privilege of being a current county commissioner. And in that role, I have come to learn earnestly how critical the decisions that I make affect the daily lives of those that I serve. I am running for Nonzo County Commissioner because I'm a conservative Republican. And in that, I recognize responsible budgeting. I recognize the need for this community to move forward in a way 
that recognizes the needs of all the citizens that we serve in Onslow County. I would like to personally ask for your vote, your prayers, and your support as we move forward in Onslow County. Thank you. Ms. Barbara Eichner. Thank you, Elliot. <clears throat> and I would like to thank the ladies and gentlemen, the citizens that elected me a few years back to be a county commissioner and to serve my county. One thing that I learned in those few years has been the importance of strong, decisive leadership. Our county needs local leaders that know how to lead. Almost 80% of our budget goes to three separate divisions. It goes to education, it goes to public safety, and it goes to human, res uh, human services. That does not leave a lot uh, for you and I to discuss on how we can spend it for services that our citizens need. As a common sense conservative, I will evaluate each request for those funds and fairly administer them to the departments that meet the needs of our citizens now and in the future. I would like to ask you to continue to support me on March 15th and reelect me as one of your county commissioners. Thank you. Robin Knapp. Thank you to everybody that's here. Uh, my name is Robin Knapp. I am a, a Air Force veteran. I'm a retired special agent with NCIS. I've served uh, 27 years in federal law enforcement and almost 29 years in government service. I am a fiscal conservative. I feel that there's a way to look within our own budget uh, to decrease the chance of any type of taxes being raised in the future. Um, I'm a firm believer because of my background and what I've seen throughout my career that, that Oslo County is in dire need. Uh, the establishment of a well-qualified mental health facility and a detoxification facility, I've seen firsthand the atrocities of people that are addicted and what it does. It leads to an increase of crime, and it also um, uh, detrimental to the children of the, of the county. Um, I'm also a big believer in small businesses. I think small businesses are the backbone of, of the United States. We need to quit uh, suffocating them and try to give them some relief and, and to assist them. You know, a, a quarter in a big corporation's pocket is $10 to the small business owner. And also, lastly, um, I believe because of our div diverse um, population here, I think we should district our county and maybe add two county commissioners here so that we can better represent all the people, no matter race, color, or anything, in this county. Thank you. I hope you vote for me. Philip Morton. Thank you uh, for being here. Uh, my name is Philip Morton. I was born and raised here in Onslow County. My family dates back for over 250 years here. Uh, I love this county, and uh, above all else, I want to let you know that uh, I'm a child of the Most High God. I think that we need people serving our county with integrity and Christian values. I'm not a uh, politician. I'm a businessman. I sell insurance and financial products. Um, as your commissioner, I, I want to let you know the citizens, we answer to you. Uh, when you, the citizens, uh, vote no on something, as your commissioner, I'm not going to go in a room and close the door and vote yes. I want to be your voice in Onslow County, and I appreciate your support. Thank you. I am Mark Price. I thank the chamber for sponsoring the event. Uh, I'm a 28-year resident of Onslow County. I've, I've uh, been employed by North Carolina Public Schools for 29 years. Out of those 29, 28 of them have been here in Onslow County. Uh, that's something I'm, I'm proud of, to have been a, a part of. I've also been a, a football coach, a Fellowship of Christian Athletes huddle coach as well. Uh, I think all of those positions bring us a certain level of uh, experiences to the table. And most importantly, I have a core set of principles, of conservative principles, that I want to bring to the table to address issues because we're on a track within the next five years to increase taxes between five to six cents. You know, so I want to bring those conservative principles to the table to, to address these problems and to move Onslow County forward based on conservative principles. Thank you. Mr. Robert, Mr. Bob Thank you, sir. Thank you all for being here. 
Uh, my family dates back uh, in Oslo County to uh, Camp of June. Um, I'm a, I was born at Camp of June, and uh, I married a, 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 a Camp of June Marine's uh, daughter. I graduated from uh, Jacksonville High School. I have a degree from NC State and a master's in business from um, Boston University. I've been a, a, a part of a successful small business firm here in Oslo County for 28 years. I have previously served six years on the Jacksonville Water and Sewer Advisory Board. I spent 15 years on the Jacksonville Planning, Planning Advisory Board. I'm currently serving a second term on the Jacksonville City Council, and I enjoy serving the citizens of Jacksonville and Oslo County, and I would very much like to bring my small business experience and expertise to the Board of Commissioners. Thank you. Okay, thanks for all you all for the opening statements. I would like to mention that there is one candidate who is not here. Uh, Mr. W.C. Jarman had indicated that he was uh, planning to uh, appear tonight, uh, but he has had a medical situation in his family come up, and he was unable to make it and unable to attend tonight. Uh, and with that, um, who are we going to start off with? Mark Price, and we'll go to uh, my left, your right. Okay. Mr. Warden, that means you'll be trailing the pack again, again. but that's okay. <laughs> you'll, you'll probably get your chance. Thank you for mentioning the pack. <laughs> oh, <Thank> yeah. you. <laughs> um, you know, some of you may have already uh, touched on this topic um, as you answered your questions. And I will, you know, I'm not, usually these questions are pretty specific. Tonight I have fra uh, sort of framed some of these questions to be very broad to give you a chance, because we do have such a large field, to give you a chance to talk about the things that are important to you as candidates. I will consider this night to be a success if you leave here thinking that you've gotten your message across. So uh, I sort of apologize for that, but uh, we'll get into some, some specifics later on. Uh, but if you were elected as a county commissioner, what would be your top area of concern that you plan to address during the upcoming term of office? Mr. Price. The top priority, I think, would be to try to have the goal of, of maintaining the low tax rate, you know, because that's what brings jobs to Onslow County. That's what's going to bring jobs to Onslow County, is a low tax rate, you know, and, and having an educated workforce, having a strong education system, you know, of uh, people who are ready to step into jobs. You know, that's an important role that uh, Coastal Carolina Community College plays here, you know, is they, they train uh, workers. And, and aid those businesses in transitioning in, that's something we can highlight even more. And so maintaining that low tax rate, I think, would be the key thing. And looking at our priorities, you know, what are our priorities, what are our needs and our wants, and, and, and going through that process of prioritizing and, uh, and applying those principles that you, bring, that you, uh, you believe strongly in to the table here. Mr. Morton, the question is, if you were elected as a county commissioner, what will be your top area of concern that you plan to address during the upcoming term of office? My first focus would be uh, helping our senior citizens. Uh, I'm a very big advocate uh, for senior citizens. Uh, we are continuously, uh, not us individually, but we're continuously taken away from senior citizens. Uh, we need to find a way in this county to help uh, our senior citizens. And I'm going to give you an example of uh, what I mean by that. Um, the Meals on Wheels program here in Oslo County, I believe that we really need to reach out and do a better job of uh, what's being currently done there. In September of 2015, we had 102 senior citizens in Onslow County that were currently on a waiting list just to uh, get a meal. We need to do a better job of that. Senior citizens affects me. It affects all of the audience here. It affects each of us up here. If we're not a senior, we will be one day, or our family currently is now. We need to find a way to uh, help these seniors and uh, carry forward. Thank you. Mr. Knapp? Based on my experience, I've been here since 1990. I spent most of my career uh, working narcotics investigations with the state, local, and federal agencies. And our target was always a narcotics dealer. But what we forget in the wake are all those that are addicted by these people uh, that are pushing their poison on our kids and to the families. I've seen firsthand the travesty of people that are addicted, that are, that are not concerned about their children, they don't receive the proper treatment, and then their addiction leads to an increase in crime because they, they need that money for their fix. I would like to see 
us work toward the detoxification center to get the proper short-term and long-term treatment for some of these people. And I think that goes hand in hand with the mental illness that we're seeing in this country as well. There's a high uh, incident of mental illness and mental illness related crime that we need to focus in on and we need to take care of our people in the backyard, our, our county. We need to focus on these people and not throw them to the side of the road as trash. Other, the second thing is that I think there should be open lines of communication between the, the county commissioners and the citizens, more public forums to discuss and to listen and to hear what the citizens have to say and to represent them properly. Would you repeat the question, please? If you were elected as a county commissioner, what will be the top area of concern that you plan to address during the upcoming term of office? Well, you know, Elliot, our county has m multiple facets of which the Board of Commissioners have to address. I think that one of the major concerns I have is that sometimes we get tunnel vision into one specific area. We developed back in 2009 when I was first elected a strategic plan for our county, something that we had never had before. We also developed a capital improvement plan and set aside a revenue stream to meet those needs. It is critical that we have a strategic plan that is up to date, that looks at the future needs, the future needs of our county as we sit here tonight, Onslow County is the number one percentage of children under five years old. We have 9.8% of our population under the age of five. If we do not address the educational needs 10 years from now, we're going to be behind the eight ball. Thank you. Ms. Williams. Yes, thank you. I would say the first thing that I would look at in becoming your next county commissioner is workforce development. When I worked at the Chamber of Commerce as a vice president, workforce division was an area that I truly embraced and recognized the need that even if you have industry to come into Onslow County, if you don't have the proper workforce to handle the jobs that are needed, that can be created what good are we? Secondly, I would look at ways that we can uh, deal with municipalities and have the county and our relationships to keep those in a very positive atmosphere and continue to keep proper relationships. Because at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day, we are all Onslow County. We all play an intricate role in a part of what goes on in this county. And we all have to work together and build consensus within this community Thank you. in order to meet the needs. Thank you. Mr. Freeman. Yes, uh, one of the first things that I would look at is, as I've heard n numerous citizens talking about the board makeup of only being five members. I agree with those folks as the time has come with the budget that we have over 195 million and nearing 200, 100,000 residents, that we need to look at increasing the board to seven members. And also along with that, that would entail going to staggered terms on the commissioners, where every two years we would be electing four commissioners with three with a, with a four-year term and one with a two-year term, so change of power could come about. It would also allow the people to speak if they're not satisfied with what is going on with the commissioners or what I'm doing or what anyone else is doing and gives more voice to the people. Also, there's over 24 boards, I understand, that the commissioners are need to attend as part of the county uh, to take care of business, and that would give more folks to help take care of that. Thank you. Mr. Andy. Thank you. I, I agree with some of the other candidates. Uh, I believe that we should have staggered terms and a seven-man board. Streamline government to uh, eliminate wasteful spending. I, I was with the Highway Patrol for 30-some for years, and uh, you can't tell me that uh, 
that there's not wasteful spending somewhere in each department within the county and the state. We'd also address the needs of the elderly and those suffering from, mis from mental disabilities. Uh, keep the citizens well informed of all issues and decisions. And I'd like to enact a program where, where the commissioners could, on a one-on-one -on -one basis with department heads, such as, such as the sheriff or, or, or the, uh, the landfills or, or all the other departments where the, where the county commissioners could one-on-one -on -one and, and ensure that proficiency is in their departments. Dan. A little bit of history. Taxes is a big issue for all of us, but the taxes takes care of all of our 24 departments. It takes care of all the individual groups that we have, human services, public safety, and education. But the key to it is 1981, 1982, and 1983, the tax rate was 79 cents. When you go to 1998, 99, it was 69.4 cents. So we're lower at 67.5, which is outstanding. But in 2010, we rolled it back two cents when we got the quarter cent sales tax, which helped out a lot with education and public safety, which give public safety a helping hand when we dealt with the first responders at the fire department so those individuals could respond during the daytime because there's not enough firefighters in the daytime to handle that situation. Grants, we're always looking at grants, and the, one of the biggest grants we got recently was through Trillion, which Jack Wright sits on that board, and Trillion gave us $400,000 for equipment, for handicap equipment at the park. These are the kind of things that we have to look at, but balancing the budget, we're going to keep it like it is in 2018. Right. Thank you. Um, I think uh, Commissioner Buchanan touched on one thing that I was going to say, and that was the uh, volunteer fire departments. We have 18 volunteer fire departments, and when they falter, they're under the jurisdiction of the North Carolina Department of Insurance and they make all the rules and when they decide to cancel their certification uh, the people that lives in that fire district they basically out of fire protection so i think we need to look at that that's one thing to see what we can do to, to sure that situation up with all the volunteers school funding that is another tremendous issue 400 new students a year at eighteen hundred dollars per student additional money that has to be paid to the schools. We're mandated by the, uh, the state to fund schools and, and pay for the buildings to house them in. And that's a tremendous uh, tax burden on the county. I would advocate sales tax, to enact sales tax to take the place of property tax. Thank you. Mr. Fletcher. Thank you. First, I'm a father. So my first priority is to take care of our youth. I'm listening to the citizens. We need to do more for our youth. We need to provide them with youth enrichment centers, youth development centers, and we need to do more, which means we need to provide youth uh, prevention centers. The parents are asking for a YMCA. The parents are asking that their children be able to get out and do more. We need to develop in partnership with our chambers, the YMCA, and the Boys and Girls Club to ensure that our youth is number one. Secondly, I would look at hospice centers. We need to do more for our senior citizens. We need to provide more for you. You have paved the way so that we may be here to represent you. We need to do more for you. Thirdly, I will look at our veterans. Again, the veterans have paved the way so that we can be here today. We need to look at local veteran affairs. Fourthly, I will look at those job industries, meaning we need to beautify Onslow County for all. This way we can provide an opportunity for everyone. Thank you, sir. Mr. Bennett. Yes, sir. There are, there are a lot of needs in Onslow County, but I think that in, in uh, um, my top area concern would be economic development because the way to, out, to, way to take care of all of these issues that we've talked about is to grow our tax base. So if we can, if we can do things to, uh, to improve our industry and our, our business in Onslow County, then, then we'll raise enough revenue to take care of these other issues. Some of the things that I know could happen is working with our state legislators to get I-40 in here, get a, uh, to get uh, a road into Onslow County. That's one of our biggest issues I think we have. There's also an effort underway, I understand, to, uh, to get a rail spur off of uh, the, from the federal government. So uh, those kind of things are exactly what we need to do to uh, improve our tax base and, uh, and bring our county um, up to where we can uh, be able to afford to do all these other things that we need to do. And we'll come back down to the end for Mr. Whitfield. All right. Well, um, 
the way a lot of people put this, they say the first thing I do when I'm elected, well, the first thing that we're going to do when we're elect, when we swear in, is we're going to elect a chairman. And are we going to listen to the voters? This is kind of an easy decision. It's a tradition that's been around in Onslow County for a long time, and it's kind of kind of ignored last time. <coughs> but uh, whoever receives the most votes, that's that's going to be the chairman. Get behind the chairman, support him. Another thing that uh, I would pay close, close attention to is historically every eight years there's a big tax increase that happened in 2009 happened in 2001 and in 1993 they didn't do it but they pushed it off to the next year in 1994 we got a big tax increase so it's coming we're going to get a tax increase probably in in fiscal year 2017 or like uh, Paul Buchanan said 2018 and we need to look for ways to keep that as minimal as possible thanks sir uh, one of the things I'd like to work on is, is furthering the collaborative uh, partnerships that I think the, the Board of Commissioners should do. I think that the commissioners should have a good and healthy relationship with each of the municipalities and also with the base. Uh, in this time of, of money being short, I think if we work together, there's no telling how much good we all can create by working together for the, for the common good. We're all in this together. We're, we're one county, and we have an opportunity to work together and share together and plan together and think together, and, and I think there's no limit to what we can accomplish if we work together. The other thing that I'd like to work on is uh, transparency. Uh, the Board of Commissioners currently have their, their regular meeting published uh, or, or televised. I'd like to see the workshops done also. I think there's a lot of uh, just items that are discussed that, uh, that I think the citizens of Onslow County are interested in. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Junior Freeman, and Elliot. we'll go to Elliot. Oh, I'm sorry. Rebuttal. Rebuttal for Mr. Paul Buchanan. Yeah. I just wanted a senior citizen to say, we, we deliver 1,000 meals on wheels per month. We give 2,000 meals at the senior center. We're also fixing to open up another senior center in Sneeds Ferry. We look out for our seniors, and this is paid by the county. We do miss you on a rebuttal. Do what Mr. Buchanan just did and call it to our attention, and we'll try to get right back with you. Um, I apologize. That's okay. Uh, Mr. Junior Freeman, and we will go to my right, your left. So that means that me and Air Williams will be next. Okay. Um, some of you already talked about this again, but we're going to go over it. Let's talk about the county budget. What is your assessment of the county's financial situation in terms of the overall county budget and the current tax rate? What are your positions on the current level of spending and future tax increases? Well, that's a good one to throw out and get started with. Uh, the, uh, of course, our, our tax rate uh, at 67 and a half cent ad valorem is too high. Um, we, we need to lower our taxes. We need to look for every way that we can to lower the taxes. But we don't want to sacrifice services. But we need to see what where the revenue will come in. And of course, the ad valorem now is around $91 million. Uh, we have uh, sales tax coming in. It's $37 uh, million. And the uh, Overall budget at 195 million plus some other things carrying it very close and a little over 200 million dollars in the budget. That's a lot of money that um, to manage uh, in all the departments, and we need to look at our department employees to give us suggestions on how to trim things down. Thank you. Thank Ms. you. Sarah Williams. Yes. Um, one thing that I have here that I want to share with the audience, and that is. Onzo County maintained a grade of A from the John Locke Foundation for Transparency, one of only six in the state. I think sometimes and oftentimes we forget that this community, Onzo County, is in the greatest financial solvent state that it has been. And with that, I know that sometimes taxes may be raised. No one likes to hear that. No one likes to have that conversation. But when you have services that need to be rendered, and when you have mandates by the state, you're governed by 
what you quote unquote have to do in order to service the population here. We have 200,000 in population. Not everyone utilizes the services to the same degree. However, you have to make sure that that budget, and we start at zero balance budget, so we're not looking at additional monies each year from each department. That zero ground budget dollar. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> I believe the question was in reference to I, the tax rate. I don't mind reading it again. Please do. Okay. What is your assessment of the county's financial situation in terms of the overall county budget and the, ta and the current tax rate? What are your positions on the current level of spending and future tax increases? We constantly at the government center are looking for ways to cut spending. Whether it's a budget cycle or non-budget cycle, the desire to operate local county government at the most efficient is paramount among all of us at the county level. Our tax rate today is lower than it was in 2002. If you want to look back at a snapshot of just the past 10 years, 10 years ago, our tax rate was 67 cents. Today, it is 67.5. We have fluctuations during uh, the decades. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. We have no control over what the market of the reval is. We have to set a tax rate that can provide the services that our citizens have indicated to us that are their utmost importance. Thank you. Mr. Knapp. The tax issue is always going to be an, an issue of debate. Um, as, as I told you before, I'm a fiscal conservative, and I want to break it down even smaller than that or very simplistic. Say it's your budget. You have a set amount of money, and what you do is you hot wash your budget, i.e., you go through your budget and then identify those things that the county citizens need, not want. Okay, there's a difference there, and people don't pay attention to that, in my opinion. Identify the priorities. You take your budget, you look at the programs there. There are programs out there that I have seen that are doing absolutely nothing. Okay? So why are, they, why are they being funded? Okay? We need to be smarter to identify some of these, pro these uh, programs and relocate our funds to the programs that we have a need for that benefit the citizens. Not because of what they want, but what benefits all the citizens in the county, because that's what we're here for. We represent the citizens and what's best for the citizens in terms of their needs, not their wants. Mr. Morton. I have to agree with uh, Mr. Knapp. Uh, the tax issue is always going to be uh, something that is um, going to go in easy in most homes. But I think that we really need to take the budget and sit down and really look at needs and wants. Uh, being in the financial industry, I can tell you, uh, there's a lot of things that you can trim away to make something work. So again, if we were just to take every department and find what the needs and the wants are, and let's take care of the needs first, we'll correct any tax issue we have in Onslow County. Thank you. Mr. Price. I think most people are, are kind of like I am. They want to know what the bottom line is, how much they pay, not how much what the rate is, you know, as far as you know, what's the bottom line of how much I'm going to pay? It's kind of like when I go to buy a car, guy offers me an interest rate, I can get you this interest rate. I said, I don't care what the, about the interest rates. I want to know what the bottom line is. I want to know how much I'm going to have to pay. So that's, that's really what matters to people is how much tax they're paying based on the evaluation of their properties. And so uh, rates probably aren't going to matter that much as, as far as how much are they paying. And, and as far as, as the need for certain things are needed, yeah, I think everyone would acknowledge we needed a school in Dixon Middle, Dixon Middle School. Yeah, but uh, there's there's some better ways of raising revenue. We mentioned the quarter cent sales tax, submitting that to the voters, uh, getting our state delegation to support that in the General Assembly, yeah, and having that submitted to the voters. Let the voters decide you know, if, if they would support a sales tax rather than the property tax because the sales tax is going to bring in uh, 4.6 to 5.4 million for a quarter cent. Thank you. Mr. Warden. 
Ellie. We'll, yeah, we'll get through. We'll go through the entire um, slate, and then we get back to the rebuttals. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mr. Ward. As I mentioned, uh, I think in in today's era of shrinking monies. Uh, I think it's more important that we cooperate among the various entities that make up Onslow County to make sure that we get the best bang for all of our tax money, be it money that we send local, state, or federal. For example, we're having a, an overcrowding issue in the Onslow County schools, and I'm going to steal something I learned just a little while ago. We have some schools on the base that are, that are under, understaffed, or not understaffed, but underpopulated. Under, uh, I think we can cooperate with those folks. Now, I know we've got some issues with security, but I can tell you that the base right now is wanting to cooperate more with Onslow County and the surrounding municipalities right now because even they are facing shortages of money. As we continue to grow, we're growing, uh, I heard, 300 to 400 uh, students a year. As we continue to grow here in Onslow County, we're going to need to find new and inventive ways to stretch our dollars. Mr. Whitfield. Any government is going to be in a good financial position because there's, like, in, it, you would try to compare it to our households. We can't always increase our income just because we want to, but the government can. And so that, with that, you know, government's in a good financial position. And Onslow County does a very good job of uh, managing their finances. Um, but if we are going to cut our taxes, if we are going to reduce our taxes, if we're going to keep from uh, raising them, we are going to have to sacrifice services, and, and I think that's okay with most citizens. Most citizens don't sit around saying, what kind of county services am I going to get? Most of us just look at our property tax bill when it comes in the mail every year. And so I think that, uh, that uh, we are going to have to sacrifice services. So it's going to be some tough decisions that's going to have to be made if we're going to be serious about it, or we'll just keep having the discussion over and over and never do anything about it. So it's going to take a, a little bit of meanness, I guess. Mr. Bennett? Yes, sir, I understand that, there, that the county has limited sources of revenue, and we certainly have mandated services, and we need to have education, and we need to take care of those things. That's why my, my campaign is about refocusing. Now, there are ways that you can cut uh, expenses in a $200 million budget. One of the things that comes off the top of my head was $5 million that were given uh, away to nonprofits and contributions. Now, I love nonprofits. I've been the chairman of the Salvation Army Board for many years. We do a lot of great things, and there are hundreds of wonderful nonprofits out there. But it's not the county's uh, job to take money away from me and decide who they're going to give it to. It, uh, they can let me keep that money, and I'll give it to the nonprofits that I want to give it to. So we can reduce our tax rate by three cents by cutting out the contributions, $5 million in contributions that were given. There are other ways that we can cut this budget, and I think we need to refocus on it and get some new eyes on it. Thank you. Mr. Fletcher. <clears throat> Our budget is 489 pages, and as I'm going through our budget, I can tell you right now, we need to go through and get rid of these programs that are very wasteful and utilize these programs that benefit you, the citizens. The budget is very serious. We need to do a better job as citizens because I am a citizen. As far as tax rates, sir, yes, we can do a better job at what we have. I understand there will be an increase here within the upcoming years. We need to do a better job now on what we can do. I am not for raising taxes, and I'm not against uh, uh, lowering taxes. What I am for is finding out what we can benefit from. If we do that, then our taxes will show. You will see a decrease. If we do that as citizens, then all of our answers can be answered. I am not against, and I want everyone to understand this, I am not against our budget. We have a budget right now. It is our budget. We all together need to come together and work on our budget. Thank you, sir. Mr. Bright, the question is, what is your assessment of the county's financial situation in terms of the overall county budget and the tax rate? What are your positions on the current level of spending and, the, and any future tax increases? Well, I, th I think there's always uh, room for uh, improvement, and there's always ways you can look at uh, things that's duplicated services and see what can be uh, done to reduce the overall budget. But Oslo County is somewhat in a handicap situation with the military base being here and uh, Huffman Forest. Uh, only 40% of the county's uh, mass is uh, uh, not taxable. We can't collect tax from Camp Lejeune or from uh, Huffman Forest. 
And that puts a burden on the people here that do pay property taxes, which is 60% of the property owners, they paid a bill. And I think um, because of that, and we're not, we're not by ourselves. Uh, uh, Fort Bragg is in the same boat. Uh, Wayne County is in the same boat. The college communities are in the same boat. There's people that use the services, but they don't actually pay property tax. So I think the way we need to go, which would take legislative approval, is to look at uh, sales tax. Mr. Buchanan. Thank you. As you know, that we have seven, approximately 72 percent is mandated. The other 18 percent is what we can work with. And as county commissioners, we've been very conservative and very good stewards of the money. If you look at the net change of employees, we had 163 public safety new people. We had a minus 67 in core government. The total was a 96 net. So we were looking out and we've cutting programs. I believe in 19, we, we uh, 2009, 2010, we did 71 reduction in force. We're looking out for the public. We're looking out for being conservative and stewards of the money. And it's real important to know that when we sit down, we see the budget in May or June is whenever they set that up for us. Our employees and department heads go through a zero base and they have to justify every penny they're going to spend in this county for us to justify the tax increase or tax deduction. Mr. Innett. Well, certainly uh, I'm a taxpayer just like everyone here and everyone else that lives in Oslo County, and I, I pay my taxes. But I believe that a sales tax increase any time over a property tax increase because more of the people would contribute to the general fund through the, through the sales tax than they would through property values. And something I mentioned just a minute ago when the other question was meeting with those department heads and making sure that, that everything that's done is done in a proficient manner. You can look at mandated spending versus tourism spending. Mandated spending is that is that spending that that must be it. I mean, it's there. There's nothing you can do about it If I was let the county commissioner, I would certainly look at the tourism budget and I believe there's a lot of tax money there that could be redirected somewhere else Okay So anybody else okay, Ms. Eichner um, a lot has been said about sales tax, and I, too, would prefer a sales tax, but that's not in our domain. Senator Harry Brown tried desperately last year to get sales tax legislation passed. Had he been successful, and I applaud him for his efforts, had he been successful, this Board of Commissioners has shown that we would reduce property tax if we had alternate uh, streams of revenue. Thank you. Our next round will open up with um, Miss Millionaire Williams and go to my left, her right. So that would get me to go with Mr. Freeman next. <laughs> and Ms. Ochter, you will get this question last. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Onzo County homeowners have been hit hard in recent years by a number of factors, both in terms of property values and ability to sell their homes. What do you see as the problems facing homeowners, and what could you as a commissioner do to address them? And, and I certainly recognize that there has been an issue, and that has also been the, uh, the white elephant in the room with property taxes in reference to the buildings and the homeowners here. What I would do and what we have done, thanks to this current board, we had a housing summit. We brought in the municipalities, we brought in the realtors, we brought in different citizens, we invited to come talk to us about the concerns that they have in the housing market here. Some things are in our control, some things are not in our control. But I think first and foremost, it is always about dialoguing and having communication with those that are involved in that process and figuring out what solutions we can come up with as collaborators in the process. 
of assisting in that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Freeman. Say the question, please. Okay. Onslow County homeowners have been hit hard hit in recent years by a number of factors, both in terms of property values and ability to sell their homes. What do you see as the problems facing homeowners, and what could you as a commissioner do to address them? Well, as a, as a builder, home inspector, and a realtor, I'm very close to that industry. And the last few years, we've had a lot of out-of-town builders come in and flood the market. Result of the flooded and flooding of the market, the values have gone down quite a bit, trying to meet that and, and new houses available. So we need to, that's a, a, a hard way to go with saying that we need to build more houses because home building homes equals jobs. That is an industry in itself. But we need to look more at economic development to bring industry in, to create jobs, to have more people working to lower the tax base and lower the the uh, taxes that people have to pay on their homes, which is, is strangling quite a bit of our young and also our senior citizen homeowners that are living on fixed budgets. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ennett? Could you re repeat the question, sure. please? Onslow County homeowners have been hard, hit, hit hard in recent years by a number of factors in terms of property values and ability to sell, resell their homes. What do you see as the problems that are facing homeowners, and what could you as a commissioner do to address them? The problem I see is, uh, is too much building. And that ties in with, 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 with the other problem that I see is... Uh, Maybe we could take a look at how many houses or how many uh, uh, buildings you could put on an acre of land. I know down around where I'm from, Sneeds Ferry, uh, the, the, the value of some houses has decreased because the, the values of the houses they're building has caused the, the, the value to decrease, such as on my house and, and many other houses in Sneeds Ferry. So I would look at a I would look at uh, redirecting the regulations, or maybe maybe changing the regulations on uh, on on how much you can build uh, on on a, any certain acre of land, how many houses you can build on any certain acre of land. Thank you, Mr. Buchanan. I think that the, the summit was a big help. Uh, Barbara came together with the other commissioners to have that summit. That summit is a big asset to us to get the information from the developers and the real estate people that are out there in the field. I guess the next reevaluation is 2018. Do we need to do it in 2018 or do we have to push it out? Or do we do it in 2018 and, and see what the market's like? I think the summit has helped us out a lot with that. And we need a lot of input from the developers and from the real estate people to give us that information to see what we can do. Do we push it out or do we do it in 2018? But the other thing is overbuilding that you heard Anna talk about. We hear that a lot. We get a lot of calls on that. But the problem with it is we don't regulate that. That has to be regulated by the developers. And I have met with developers before, went to lunch with them, and they said, well, what do we do? I said, you really need to police yourselves. They really need to be able to look at what they're doing. Do they need to build this track of land, all these houses, or build this other track? Is what Dan is saying a while ago. It brought the market down, but the market's starting to turn around. Mr. Bright. Thank you, Elliot. The housing market uh, that came about in 2006 was exactly a perfect storm. Camp Lejeune come to the commissioners at back 2004, 2006. They said, we need housing. We need, we've got 20,000 additional troops coming into Onslow County. We need you to build houses. So all these developers from out of town, they took advantage of this and come here and bought up big tracts of farmland, built a lot of houses. And then um, it flooded the market because the troops then started to dissipate. So after that uh, reduction in the force, we had houses out here that were underwater also, on top of that, Camp Lejeune did have base housing that they built, and they are now renting those houses to not only military and uh, retirees, they rent them to, they've got to have a 90% occupancy rate, and that's killing the rental and the housing market. But our attorneys say we can't do a moratorium on, on permits. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bletcher? Thank you, sir. I am a homeowner, and because I'm a homeowner, Let's face facts. 
the issues that you're having are these foreclosure homes that are sitting in our communities that are bringing down our property value. That is the reality. You are looking for that solution on what can we do to ensure that these homes that are bringing down our value so that when it is time for you to sell your home or up and relocate, you can. That is what you're looking for. That is what I will give you. I will find that solution because I am a homeowner. Thank you, sir. Mr. Bennett. Yes, as a, as a realtor, these are the people that I deal with every day. They're calling me every day. They're under, underwater. 46% of our homeowners are underwater in their mortgages. Um, the, uh, I want to thank the commissioners for the housing summit because it was very informative for the citizens. I think they did a great job. But the fact is our, our, our market's getting better. Our, our market is much better than it used to be. We talked about new construction. New construction sales were down 40% from December of last year. December of this uh, of 15 was down 40% from December of 14. Uh, new construction starts are way down, and, uh, and our foreclosures are way down. The fact is the free market takes care of the real estate. Now, it hurts for a while, and there are a lot of people out there hurting, and we have to do what we can to help them. But the fact is... The free market is going to take care of our housing issues and our values are going to come back up. What we need to do as county commissioners is develop our county and keep our taxes down so these people that are underwater can pay their taxes and keep those houses until they can sell them. Thank you. Mr. Whitfield. I think my microphone's battery's running low. <laughs> I don't necessarily see this as a bad thing. I know it is, but this is a bigger issue than Onslow County. It's a cultural issue. We've been taught for a long time that a house is an investment, and I think that's very silly. A house is a place to live. And uh, it's really, uh, it's advantageous to some people if the housing market goes down. It's disadvantageous to other people when the house market goes down. Uh, but when I was 23 years old, I was able to buy a house here in Onslow County for $52,000, which if it had been any more than that, I probably wouldn't have been able to buy it. And so it was an advantage that the market was going down. And it's just like everybody's saying here, it is the building that's causing it, the excessive building. Well, I don't call it excessive because people want to build houses here, and they should be allowed to build houses here. And the same thing uh, goes for uh, people want to sell their house at a bad time, then you're not going to come out as well. So just hold on to it and live there. It's a place to live. It's not an investment. Mr. Ward. As, as stated earlier, this, this was a, a, a problem that the recession created. Uh, we, were not, we thought we were immune here in Alzo County from the housing recession and from the recession period because we had Camp Lejeune out here. Well, what happened when the rest of the country quit building houses, uh, Jacksonville, Alzo County was the only place growing because Camp Lejeune was growing. And so these out-of-town, out out-of-state uh, builders came in and they started building cheaper houses for less than what our local builders could do. And yes, they have overbuilt. And those, those out of town, out of state builders have gone back to wherever they came from and we're really basically back to local builders. We are getting better. Um, you know, I, to ask the county commissioners to do anything about it, this is a free enterprise market society. I don't think anybody in here thinks that the county commissioners could do a better job of deciding how many houses to build than the, than the marketplace. To. I have faith in the American people to decide where and, where and how they're going to build and buy. Thank you. Mr. Price, the question is, uh, what do you see as the problems facing Onslow County homeowners, and what could you as a commissioner do to address them? I agree with those who have said that uh, yeah, the, that the county commissioners really can't regulate this problem. You know, that eventually the market forces are going to self-correct over a period of time. That you know, there's going to be a, a period of pain, yes. But in the meantime, we, we can continue to inform homeowners that there's a process that they can go through as they go through the tax office that they can submit you know, uh, you know, estimates or, or uh, the evaluations on other houses that have sold at X amount. You know, so that they could go uh, through the appeals process and let those homeowners know as we continue to do that and uh, <laughs> so that they could, uh, you know, so the tax office could adjust that amount of a uh, level of tax expected on that property. Mr. Morton? I would have to say uh, I, I honestly don't believe the county commissioner is going to do anything to change it. Uh, they are not the ones that put us in this current situation. 
uh, as was just said a moment ago, in 2008 when the recession came here, Onslow County was not hit with that just yet. Uh, Camp Lejeune was uh, really booming. And we had a, a lot of greedy people from out of town coming and doing mass building. Uh, and of course that has caught up with us. Anybody in this room that has any rentals or anything, uh, my family has many and look, we, we suffered as much as anybody. Um, again, I don't think the county commissioners can change that. I do applaud our commissioners for the summit that they've done. I think it was just and very fair to every citizen in the county uh, and it was certainly needed. But uh, again, I don't think they can do anything to change it. It's going to take care of itself. Thank you. Seems to be a general consensus across the board and I too have to uh, applaud the, the uh, county commissioners for that summit for taking the initiative. Uh, this is something that the, the county commissioners cannot control. This is not on their plate. Again, it goes to the free housing market. You know, we can't control what's going to happen. Because of the nature of Camp Lejeune, it's a transitory type population. You know, we have Marines that are coming in here. Then all of a sudden, their budget cuts. They plan for that. Working with the government, I know, because I watch those facilities go up. And all of a sudden, all the troops that we expected to come here did not come here. They were reassigned for whatever reason. Okay, so. This is something we're talking about something I think is outside the parameters of the Board of County Commissioners and it's something that we cannot control. And again, I applaud them for, for, for seeking that summit to try to find a fix for a problem that they're not, they're not responsible for. So I disagree with one uh, candidate here who says a home is not an investment. I absolutely disagree. That's the American dream. It doesn't matter what your house value is. I don't care if your house value is $55,000 or $150,000. It's your house. It's your investment. If you don't make money, that's fine, but it is your house where your kids and you can live. Thank you. Ms. Ochtner. Yes. <clears throat> we all here are Republicans, and, and as Republicans, one of our major platforms is not to expand government. Uh, I think that we all would like to see government take a big step back out of our personal lives. Absolutely. And whether or not you have bought a home and paid too much for it, that's your personal decision. Uh, for government to step in, and even if we had the authority, which we do not, to enact a moratorium, we need to be very cautious when we start trying to manipulate the free marketplace, that's when we could really cause tremendous damage to our economy. We have a large force of construction workers that work here in this county, and to penalize them because of a market, the free marketplace would be unfair. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go rebuttal. to a. We have a rebuttal, have a rebuttal Mr. Freeman. Okay. Yes. I attended the, the summit as well, and one of the things I brought up at that time was through our tourism dollars that we're marketing tourists to come to our area is market the houses that we have throughout the United States for senior citizens and retirees and especially veterans that can come to the military area and have benefits as well to come and take advantage of the prices on those homes. And of course, if you look up north, I've never seen the, the magazine uh, Northern Living. So, Everybody needs to come down here and, and enjoy the, the little weather that we have difference. Thank you. That's cool. Okay, here's a question that was submitted by a citizen. Would you, and, and we're going to start off with... Um, Mr. Royce Bennett and proceed to my right, his left. That means we're going to go this way, all the way to you, Eric. <laughs> Mr. Whitfield, thank you, uh, Royce. The question is this: Here's it was submitted by a citizen. Would you be in favor of a consolidated countywide police force to save money and avoid duplication of services? The sheriff's office, under such an arrangement, would engage in only state constitutionally mandated services, such as court security, jail operations, and deliverance of subpoenas. Please explain your answer. I don't think that would save money to start with. I, I think that it would it would be uh, more expensive, and I would not uh, uh, would not uh, think that it would be the way for us to go. 
You would have to duplicate administrative services. You'd have a new police administration as well as you'd still have to have a sheriff administration. Your sheriff's department has 200 uh, some employees in the jail. Those people would still be there. You'd still need human resources for them. You would still need all the support services for those people with the sheriff's department. And then you take another 100, 200 people and put them into a police department and you're going to have to have the same duplicated services um, for the police department. So first of all, I don't believe it would save money. And uh, second of all, I don't think that it's, um, I don't think it's necessary for Onslow County. I think the sheriff can handle the uh, law enforcement responsibilities for Onslow County. Mr. Bletcher. Thank you, sir. No, I do not think it's necessary for Onslow County. We have a great sheriff department and we need to do more for our first responders, all of our first responders. I think our sheriff department is doing an outstanding job right now. I believe that our sheriff right now is doing an outstanding job serving the people at which he is called to serve. I believe our sheriff department right now could be uh, helpful to all the citizens uh, by being able to continue their open door policy, which they have right now. If you have concerns as a citizen, I advise you, because I am a citizen, to utilize that open door policy. I have used it and it works. I applaud our sheriff department. We have a great sheriff department and we must remember that we can't put a price on safety. Thank you to our sheriff department. Mr. Bright. Thank you, Elliot. Um, my first response would be no, that we do not need a county police. We have a county police, which is called a Oslo County Sheriff's Department. Uh, however, um, I haven't seen any numbers on what it would cost or what would be involved in that process. I think you have to have legislative approval for that. So I would need to look at the numbers before I would uh, be even close to saying uh, where I would approve that or not. Mr. Buchanan? Basically, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And, and I noticed some people think that I had brought it up once before, which I did. And county police, like Jack is saying, is something you'd have to look at. You have to research it, develop it, and you're talking about a lot of time to do that. Uh, would it work? I have no idea. I'd have to, like Jack, I'd have to see the numbers to see if they would work. But right now, I'm happy with other things are working. I have no problem with it. Uh, they're doing a good job. Uh, I see them out working quite a bit. They do run a lot of radar. I do see that um, <laughs> because that was an issue way back when. But uh, it's not an issue with me right now. Right now, the sheriff's doing a good job. Thank you. Mr. Andy? Well, studies have shown uh, overall that county policing or consolidated policing, whatever you want to, you know, how you want to term it, doesn't do very well in, in, in rural areas such as Onslow County. They tried it back down in, in Columbus County a number of years ago, and it, and it pretty much was a failure. Uh, you would, as Commissioner Bright and Commissioner Buchanan have already alluded to, there, there, would, be, there would be cost. I mean, you, you couldn't get around the cost. Uh, I, I believe there would be enormous cost. And, uh, I am a very strong advocate of, of law enforcement as well as all other emergency uh, personnel. I, uh, I applaud the sheriff on the job that he is doing, and uh, I, I just feel that, uh, that the county police would, would not be advantageous to the taxpayers of Monslow County. Mr. Freeman? I agree with the, everything everyone else has said, of course, but I, I too have heard that it has failed in a lot of areas, and we do have a great sheriff's department. As being a former law enforcement officer and working with the different agencies in the time I did back in the early 70s, everybody worked real good together, and it continues with the municipalities and all we have. Each officer is a sworn officer for crimes in their presence, and they <laughs> take care of it. If anything, the sheriff's department with radars uh, traveling to and from calls and just patrolling cuts down on the on the number of, of traffic fatalities, drunk drivers, and they also are able to apprehend of a lot of other crimes that they find during that time. So I think we, we need to continue what we're doing, and if we had a radar in every sheriff's car, it would be great because it would certainly pick people up at the time when that can be afforded. Thank you. 
Ms. Harry uh, Williams. How do I say ditto to everyone part of the city? <laughs> <You're so ditto. laughs> uh, the only thing that I would like to add, um, and Sheriff, kudos to you openly, publicly, for the work that you're doing. And, and one of the things that I do want to applaud your efforts and the time that you're spending in your town hall meetings, because I think it's very important to hear what people are saying. So I applaud you in the effort of going throughout the county and seeking. So we're going to keep things just the way they are. <laughs> Ms. Eichner. Uh, thank you, Elliot. <clears throat> I probably am the only one sitting at this table that has actually lived through a county city merger of law enforcement. Clark County many years ago in my previous life when I lived in Nevada merged with Las Vegas uh, City Police and it was an absolute nightmare. It took many, many years for the nuances to be worked out. I don't see any reason why we should subject, subject our county or our sheriff's department to that at this particular time. I've not seen any data that would indicate to me that it would be financially a good move. So therefore, I would not support it at this time. Mr. Knapp. I guess I kind of echo everybody here. Um, I think there's only been one or two cases in the United States where it's successful, like Duval County, Florida, and some other areas. Um, the sheriff's office is one of the most sovereign offices in North Carolina, and they perform uh, an outstanding service. They're responsible, you know, for uh, civil subpoenas. They run their own investigations, et cetera, within their jurisdiction. But you have an entity in place right now that's doing an outstanding job, and I applaud the sheriff for his job as well. I've known him for, for many years as an SBI agent, and we've worked together on joint cases. But from a federal level, it's outstanding because you work through memorandums of understanding with the local jurisdiction, whether it be the sheriff's office, state bureau, or any other federal agency. So what you have is you basically have one law enforcement entity that shares assets. And I think that's what we need to keep our focus on and joint cooperation between the city police and the sheriff's office. Again, we can share our assets, we can share our equipment, and we can do the common thing and, and do our job more effectively. And we just need to make sure that they're equipped properly to do their jobs. Thank you. Mr. Morton. No, sir, I don't think we need a, uh, another department as uh, someone had asked there on that question. I actually, I think we have the finest sheriff's department in the state of North Carolina. It's run by good leadership. There is men and women of integrity in that department. And I believe as Onslow County citizens, we deserve to give them the very best to work with. Uh, when you and I were to go, when we go to work each day, we expect to work with the very best materials, uh, whatever your profession may be. And I believe that our county sheriff's office needs the exact same thing. I think we have a great leader and uh, his staff uh, are, are great people. And again, they're men and women of integrity. Uh, I agree with Mr. Buchanan. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Mr. Price. I would also view any changes as unnecessary. You know, I, I think our highway patrol does a great job of, uh, you know, enforcing the traffic out on the major highways and roads, and our sheriff's department does a great job of keeping us safe. So I, I don't see the need for it, and, and it, it seems to be that it would lead to duplication and, and more spending. That's uh, completely unnecessary. Mr. Ward. You know, one of the things that, that I've talked about a couple times is cooperation among the various entities. And that's, that's certainly true in law enforcement. We just recently, uh, the sheriffs, the, uh, the base, and the Jacksonville and all of the other municipalities just recently went to a new radio uh, system. That allows all of them to talk to each other directly. It used to be if we, uh, I say we, if the city or the sheriff responded in order to talk to Jacksonville or to talk to Camp of June, they had to have another radio in their truck or in their hand. They don't have that need anymore. They have that one system that everybody can talk, talk together. And if you're dealing with lives and people's safety, if you, anything that you can do to speed up communication, I think you, you do a better job policing, and I think you keep people safe. 
and I, I advocate more continued, like we're all already doing. You're sharing, uh, we're sharing uh, training facilities rather than each of them having their own. So we do, we are saving currently. So I say continue the course. Sorry, sir. Uh, one of the jobs of an elected official is to talk like we're doing right now to 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 share um, information um, on this particular topic. I'm not familiar with, and I would be uh, uh, proud to say that um, listening is another thing that uh, that elected officials do. And I would be willing to listen more about this topic, learn more about it, to see what the advantages are, and to research some you know counties that have done this in the past. But I, I'm very interested. I would like to hear more about this topic, but I don't know anything at this time. I see no need for a change. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Gene in it, and we will go to my left, his right. That means, Mr. Buchanan, you'll be next, and Mr. Freeman, you'll bring up the rear this time. The problems on the north end of Topsail Island have been well documented in the media and on social networks. An entire portion of the county seems to be at risk of falling into the sea, structures and all. Just offshore navigation of the new river has been a persistent concern. What, if anything, should county government be doing to address those situations? Well, the, the present the present thing that's being done and, and, and has been done for as long as I can remember is dredging the inlet. And basically, if you're not familiar with dredging, uh, there, there's two types of dredges. You've got a hopper dredge and then you've got a pipe dredge. And, and, and the hopper dredge just simply picks up the, the, the sand, puts it in the hopper, and you haul it off somewhere else to, to subsidize the beach. Well, on your, on your side caster, you simply blow the sand 20, 30, 40, 50 feet, and then when the tide comes in, of course, the sand moves right back where it's supposed to be. Uh, I, I believe the only way to save the, uh, the north end of, of, of the island is, is to uh, get our local legislators and senators on board and, and maybe even their congressmen uh, and, and look at a jetty. To, to protect the, uh, the, the property and also the citizens down there. Thank you. Mr. Buchanan. Well, as you know, we spend a lot of money, the county does, and it's tourism money, occupancy tax that we use on that inlet. And we've done it, I don't know how many times since I've been a commissioner in the last 11 years, several times. But the, but the key to it is, is the, the one dredge couldn't get in, so we had to wait. It had, the Meredith couldn't get into the inlet. The inlet is so shallow. But the money that we put together, we put money away every year for dredging of that inlet. But the key to it is, is that the inlet's not open to fishermen suffer. And right now we're working hard trying to figure that out. And what Mr. Ennett said about jetty, it's a groin. And the problem with that is the state of North Carolina, and Harry Brown's in the audience, he can talk with anybody later on if he'd like to. There's only four permits, I believe, that were issued. And we're trying to get, and Harry's working with us, trying to get a permit so we can do the new river inlet. But right now, it's other places that have those, for what they call a groin. Mr. Bright. Thank you, Elliot. Um, the um, Army Corps of Engineers uh, did basically fund that with uh, federal money at one time, where they come and uh, dredged out the inlet and they dredged out the waterway and they dredged out other places that were shallow. And um, th uh, that money got cut off. Uh, and thanks to Congressman Walter Jones, he just gave us $500,000 that got appropriated to, to go down and do some emergency dredging. And without a, um, and we give uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in tourism money to keep that in and open because we've got a fishing, uh, commercial fishing industry and we've got a uh, recreational fishing industry and they have to get in and out. And if that bottom is too shallow, they, they uh, destroy the bottom of their boat, then they're out of business and uh, those people don't have a job and the, a tremendous amount of other people don't have work. If we can't get or locate a permanent fix. Okay, thank you. Mr. Fletcher. Thank you, sir. I actually had the pleasure of speaking with a couple of farm uh, fishermen and I actually had the pleasure of speaking with a couple of the uh, citizens at North Topsail. And 
the environmental studies need to continue so that we can properly do uh, proper dredging up there in that area so that those uh, small business owners, those fishermen can continue to be able to provide for their families. That was their main concern. Thank you, sir. Mr. Bennett? I do believe that the inlet is terribly important to our commercial fishing industry and also our, our, um, our recreational fishermen and tourism. So we need to do everything we can to keep that inlet open. I think that the only uh, real answer, the, the permanent solution is terminal groins, which we have to work with uh, with our state legislature to, to get that approved and then try to get funding uh, to actually do that. So. Um, I'd say we just need to continue to work with the state and um, and try to get that taken care of. Mr. Whitfield? I said this is a joint governmental operator. This is something we're going to have to work with the state and work with the federal government and with the North Top Cell town to keep the inlet open. And for, uh, like, I would, I would support uh, installing a, a groin, as they're calling it, um, that's something that, uh, but like I said, that's something Onslow County is not going to have to foot the whole bill for. We're going to have to work with our different levels of government to get that accomplished. But I, I think it's a worthy endeavor. Well, there's actually two, two parts to that question. And I think, number one, we need to make sure that we can keep New River Inlet open as much as possible. Whatever that involves, and it may involve some sort of a permanent, uh, permanent growing. Uh, the flushing of the new river is important for the fisheries, not only for the, for the commercial fishermen, but also the recreational fishermen. I can tell you the commercial fishermen probably would rather spend most of their time trying to harvest the oysters, the clams, the fish out of new river than they would have to drive up or get their boat all the way down to Florida or up to New England. So I think we need to get that, that inlet open to help foster the commercial and recreational fishery in the new river itself and as to what we can do for the property owners on the north end i don't know much that that we can do i i think mother nature is determined that it moves sand when and will it at, at her own whim and i don't know that throwing our good hard-earned tax money at it is a is a good solution mr price I agree that it's vital to keep up open the new uh, New River Inland as well. You know, for the commercial fishermen and recreational fishermen, that it's going to have to require all the levels of government working together. Uh, and likewise, in in regard to North Topsail, uh, whenever I lived down there in 1988, they were telling people not to build down there. Way back then, you know, uh, 20 28 years ago or whatever, 30 years ago, whatever it was, you know, they told people not to build down there then. Uh, and so I don't think it's a role of government to subsidize someone else's uh, choices in, in where they build. And so I would, I would not favor any, any action by Onslow County to do anything with that regard. Mr. Morton, we're talking about the uh, volatile <laughs> north end of Topsail Island, that both the New River and the uh, erosion that has occurred on the island itself. What, what are the solutions? Keeping the New River Inlet open is uh, detrimental to our county. Um, I grew up on a tobacco farm here, so I don't know the first thing about uh, fishing. But I'll tell you that the problem that has occurred down there just didn't happen overnight time. Shame on us for uh, allowing people to continue to build down there after they were told not to build. And then uh, we had these overinflated values down there on this land. Uh, Mother Nature's going to do what Mother Nature wants to do, and there's nothing any taxpayer can do anything about, or any county commissioner. Uh, but we need to do what we can do to keep the uh, New River Inlet open. Uh, but I do not see where the county needs to put any tax money into doing anything on that residence. Uh, they, they've been told not to build, so we allowed it. Thank you. Mr. Knapp. I think it's imperative that, that we kind of re refocus our direction on this and kind of be more aggressive because that inlet's very important to the, to the fishermen, the small business owners. Their livelihood, their generations of family that are fishermen down there, they rely on that to be open, and it's incumbent upon us. Whether we can't fund it is to be more aggressive and to find programs within the government or the state legislature to fund this because what I've seen in the past and what I've been hearing are nothing but temporary fix to a permanent problem. And instead of a temporary fix, we need to find a way to find a solution for a permanent 
fix to this, this to this particular problem and do whatever we can to help them because I mean listen I, like I said before I'm a small business uh, supporter and we have people down there that have generations and generations of families that live right there and that's their livelihood they have to pay their mortgage they have to pay their rent they have to pay their tuition and we need to do whatever we can to find a solution for them as far as the north end of, the, of Topsail Beach I agree with everybody else I mean mother nature is gonna be mother nature and you have to pick and choose wisely thank you Ms. Eichner. Um. This is a topic that I happen to know a little bit about since I live in that area and are <clears throat> good friends with most of the fishermen. And I will tell you, they have their hands full with imported seafood, with fuel prices, with fish houses that are closing, and to let our inlet uh, close in and them have to erode away what profit they make by traveling miles uh, out of their way just to get in and out of the inlet is ridiculous. Uh, however, a terminal groin would cost about eight or nine million dollars at last estimate. We need to partner with anybody we can to keep the county from having to impact tourism funds for decades to come. And we do this by selling the, the sand or giving the sand back to North Topsail Beach for their participation in the cost of the terminal groin. Camp Lejeune has stated that that river is critical to their training mission. We need to capitalize on partnering with them and bring all parties to the table. Thank you. Okay. Let's stick with the coast a minute. Yeah, Mr. Go. Warden and... Williams. Okay. Well, actually, uh, Ms. Williams, you started this, so you get to keep going. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Ennis. Then we're going back to Mr. Ward. No, no. Now you Ms. go to Williams me. and then Mr. Yeah. Freeman, yeah. and then you get the. I was the. End. Okay, <laughs> what, whatever she said, that's what we're going to do. I think there's been a lot of conversation um, that has already been provided. But the only thing that I would add uh, is the fact that I, I feel that we've got to support that part of the county. They are still part of our county. And, and I look at Mother Nature, if we're going to call her Mother Nature, uh, when there's a disaster that happens here, a hurricane that happens here, and other effects of Mother Nature that take place, we have funding. We have a disaster fund that takes place to help out the issues that take place in, with Mother Nature here in the community. So I, I think we would be remiss in not supporting North Topsail and also the fact that there are millions of dollars that go into tourism throughout the state of North Carolina. So that is a tourist attraction as well. So I think um, it's, it would behoove us to support the efforts and what we need to do along with obtaining and collaborating with state, local, federal. Thank you. Mr. Freeman. Thank you. Uh, we need to do everything possible that we can to keep the inlet open. The river inlet is, is critical, as, as Mr. Borden said. And also, we got to remember we have another inlet in Onslow County, the Bogue Inlet. The county line runs right out the center of Bogue Inlet, shared with Carteret County. They spent several million dollars in redredging and realigning that channel, and it all washed away, washed in, as Onslow has over the years many, many, many times. If from what Ms. Eichner said, we could have got a, a growing there. We should have done it a long time ago, but we weren't allowed to do that. So we need to do everything we can to support our legislators in getting the funding and the cooperation to put growings in, growings, jetties, whatever they are. They're working up and down the coast from Maine to Florida, but we need to get on board to doing that and save our, our fishermen. Their, their lives is at stake going out every day when they try to traverse that inlet. And also, we've, we've got to try to look out for the citizens, whatever we can, on North Topsail. Thank you. And Mr. Warden has a rebuttal. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, you know, the, uh, the sales tax uh, redistribution a couple years ago, uh, we're, we uh, the, the county 
decided that they would send more money to Surf City and North Topsail Beach. Well, we all know that most of that money is, is keeps washing out the sea because they use it for beach renourishment. For example, uh, North Topsail Beach, each person received $1,371 out of the redistribution. Surf City, $1,347 per person. The unincorporated areas of Onslow County only get $175. They're basically getting about eight to nine times money of the sales tax because of that, and we all know where most of that money is washing out. Okay, I'm gonna switch gears just a little bit. I got two questions to ask you, but we only have time for one, and that's probably gonna be a 30 second question, but I would like to ask you one question that maybe we can answer by a show of hands. How, would, how many of you favor a, an expansion of the Board of Commissioners from five maybe to a number like seven? So all but uh, everybody but Mr. Buchanan and Mr. Whitfield, is that right? Okay. Well, Elliot, I think it's important that we realize that of the eight counties that we are compared with, four have five member boards and four have seven member boards. So those counties seem to have found a way to make it work and there is an inherent cost that goes with expansion okay would anybody else like to spend their last <laughs> rebuttal card on answering that question oh i didn't mean that to be a rebuttal <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm saving that <laughs> no no it's gone i'm saving it <laughs> <laughs> Along with expanding that, and the, the reason, one of the reasons why I favor that is because there are so many boards and commissions that our commissioners have to attend and liaison with, and they're stretched kind of thin. And I think going to seven would help spread that workload a little more evenly. But I think even more important, I would like to see each of the municipalities have a permanent seat on that board, similar to a ward system. I'd like to see Jacksonville. I'd like to see Sneeds Ferry. I'd like to see Holly Ridge. I'd like to see Swansburg and Richlands all have a permanent seat and a voice on that board and then the remainder be at large. Okay. Mr. Whitfield, we'll go uh, down the... Uh, this was uh, discussed at the uh, last Republican convention and the Republicans present at the convention decided that we should leave it as it is. And this is uh, one of the situations where I would uh, put my opinions as a back seat and uh, listen to the people. And I would be against changing the board on that basis alone. If the Republican Party changes their position, I would be willing to change mine as well. Mr. Bright? Actually, he raised his card prior to Mr. Price. Okay, then we'll go to. And then we'll go here. to. Okay. I'll be brief, Elliot. I, I, I raised my hand in favor of the uh, seven uh, member board, and the reason I did that. I, is because I sit on the Board of Commissioners and I know what it is to travel up and down the road. I've got one board that meets in Newburn, and then I've got another board that meets in Wilmington and a lot of times those two boards are on the same day or either there are sub boards that I sit on with those and and it just uh, sometimes I can't make other board meetings because I'm at another meeting and I think it should be spread out a little bit. I don't like big government but I'm for the seven member board. Mr. Nat. And then Mr. Price. Yeah, I'm absolutely in favor of the uh, seven member board. I kind of want to echo what Mr. Bright said because there are a lot of committees, but Oslo County, again, to me is a diverse community, uh, very diverse. We have a big Marine Corps population. We have people who are retired here, like, such as myself. We have people from all different parts of the United States uh, that live in, in so many big areas within our county. So I think with the seven member board, I think it, it allows us to better represent the citizens to be in touch with the citizens. I'd even go further to advocate, as I said earlier, public forums to sit down with certain people in these areas to understand their concern because their needs may be different than the other side of the county and we need to hear all of them. Mr. Price. As Mr. Whitfield spoke about, this began as a resolution. This came out of uh, Tar Landing and Crossroads uh, precincts and uh, we wrote up the resolution and, and talked about how all of the demands that were placed on the county commissioners, how the boards how it put stress on them that this was about representation. This was not about big government as, as we saw it, you know, that it's about representation because the population has grown and as the founding fathers designed our system as it grew, that representation would increase. And so we see it as an issue of representation uh, from crossroads and nine mile anyway, but it, it, he's, he's right, it did not pass at convention. Okay, 
best laid plans, I probably won't get to that next question. So if <laughs> anybody else wants to talk about this issue, feel, please uh, do so now. Mr. Freeman. Yes, Mr. Freeman. the uh, seven-member uh, board, I agree with everything everybody said on commending it. And I brought it up at the beginning here because it will, I feel that, that the expense will not be anything compared to the value we will have with two additional commissioners on board to be able to get their input and, and their more eyes to go over things and more people to work with the community and, and the citizens to have more contacts. Thank you. Elliot, I'd also like to add to that uh, because as everyone knows, or if you don't know, I was appointed into this position, which is very different from an election. <laughs> And I do support the seven. However, that does not constitute automatic that there will be a diverse population on that board. So for those of you that are speaking about the diversity side of it, expanding from that perspective, the people still have to vote. So I, I think that that's an important factor to take place because I am the first African-American female out of 280 some odd years of county commissioners in this community. So that, that speaks to quite a bit of diversity here on this current board. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Buchanan. Uh, the reason that I, I stay with the five at this particular time is there's more to it than just everybody here saying add two. There's a lot more diversity than what me and Eric are saying. There's more to this. There's other <coughs> people in the game that will come forward. We've already did this before. We looked at the numbers and we caught, we were gonna to go to seven. We had all recommended that. And I'm trying to remember when that was, Barbara might be able to tell you. But we caught a lot of grief when we said we wanted to go to seven. So that's the reason why I'm not doing it right now. I, I wanna see some more research, but the key to it is it is more money. And I know Mr. Freeman's saying that, you know, well, we might be able to value that, but let me explain something to you. You don't have to sit on all these boards. There's some statutory boards we sit on, and some boards we just choose to be on. So you choose, pick and choose those boards. Okay. Thank y'all. Thank y'all very much. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on to the, our closing statements. And, and uh, that will start with Mr. Jack Bright and go to my right, his left. Thank you. I'm glad to be first one out of the shoot here. <laughs> <laughs> Like I said earlier, I'm uh, a county commissioner. I've been a commissioner for eight plus years. Um, I am a conservative, and my voting record proves that I'm a conservative. Never voted for a tax increase on property. I do support a tax increase with a voter referendum or sales tax. Just to give you an idea, a one cent of property tax yields to the county $1.3 million. One cent of property tax yields $16 million. So that way everybody pays. I know it would take special legislation, but if we don't work towards that, our funding mechanism just is not working. The only tax we can levy is property tax. The sheriff needs more people. We've got 193,000 people in Onslow County now. We have more resources. We have more need for services, and that's what we sell, service. So I need your vote to continue my program. Thank you, Elliot. I want to thank Elliot for monitoring this for us tonight. He's done a good job over the last 11 years that I've been here. The people of Onslow County have chosen to elect me three times. I hope that they'll look out for me again this next term. We've worked hard, we've conservative, we look out for the money as much as we can, and we've been fairly conservative over the years, the last 11 years. And let me explain something real quick. The last seven years, we've done more from Onslow County than my first four-year term. My four, first four-year term was really a rough time, and there's people in the audience who know what I'm talking about. We went to meetings from 11.30 to 12 o'clock at night back in those days. Now we do them in an hour, sometimes 45, 50 minutes, but we get the work done, and we do a lot of that through our basic when we do workshops. I'm looking forward to the election. I look forward to you helping me get reelected. You've done it for the last three terms, and I look for your help now. Thank you. Mr. Ennett. Well, I'd like to thank the uh, Chamber of Commerce, the Governmental Affairs Committee, and each one of you for being here tonight. You show interest by coming out and, and listening to the, to the issues and the questions and the answers. I would appreciate your vote on, on March the 15th. And someone asked me the other day, they, they said, well, Gene, what, 
where are you going to promise me I vote for you? And I said, well, absolutely nothing. I said, and he said, well, that's not much of a promise. I said, well, if you think about it just a minute, it's a big promise. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't promise anybody anything. All I can promise is, uh, is I'll do the best I can, so help me God. And uh, I'd like to wish each of you a safe trip home, and God bless you. Thank you. Mr. Freeman. Yes. Uh, I will work for you, the citizens of Onslow County, to lower taxes and control spending and continue to improve the quality of life in our county. I would like to ask for one of your five votes on March the 15th. And, of course, due to the limited time that we have here tonight, it's hard for us to, any of us, to express all of our views. So I can be reached at 910-330-1650 on my cell phone at any time. <laughs> and I can be reached at emeraldcoast at hotmail.com or my Facebook page. But please reach out and let me know your feelings and, and how I can help you and what I can carry to the board if elected. And also, if you would like to help me uh, get elected, I would like to hear from you as well. But the seven commissioners board, it shows here with the number we have running that there are people and there's qualified people that are willing to serve the county. And I would appreciate serving you. Thank you. Good evening. With much prayer and supplication, I will continuously seek knowledge, ask questions in areas of government that concern our community. I will serve Onslow County in honor, integrity, and operate as a transformational servant leader. I will continue to be data-driven in making decisions, which allows our county to assess the needs and resources accordingly in order to allocate appropriately. I will support efforts to develop a competitive edge in workforce development. And I've got to share why I brought these um, tonight. Um, to my right here, S.D. Junior Freeman wanted to know what this was. And I'm going to share with the rest of you tonight. I had the opportunity to uh, be in a, on a retreat this morning, the Onslow County Farmers Market. We had different uh, practices and team building that we had to do. One of the things that came about was... Would you, uh, we got to wrap it up because will, we we're at the minute. I will do that. Is that this reflects unity. And this reflects all the different citizens, our educators, our businesses, our community leaders, our first responders, our elderly. Thank you. Thank and you. I want to be fair to everybody. Community. I do want to be fair to everybody. I, I will. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Looking for your vote on March 15th. Ms. Eichner. Uh, thank you, Elliot. <clears throat> You know, in the opening remarks, several commented on their heritage uh, at this table. I did not tell you that I am a native of Onslow County. My grandfather owned property on Camp Lejeune before it was Camp Lejeune. Um, <laughs> I, would, I would only say to you, I don't believe where you were born is an indication of how well you can be a county commissioner. I love this county more than anyone else, but that's not to say that others do not love this county equally. Mm -hmm. We have strived for years to cut spending. You talk about, I've heard many comments tonight about things that could be cut. We tried to cut libraries and parks and rec mm -hmm. several years ago. This room was full of irate citizens that said, I don't mind paying the extra, but I want these services. So at the end of the day, as a commissioner, you have to evaluate. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Knapp. There's a lot being said. Um, I want to thank everybody. We talk about diversity, and uh, uh, I guess I'm as diverse as they come, um, being half Korean and uh, half German. So, But I'm not from Onslow County. I guess you guys couldn't tell, right? But anyway. Um, I retired here because I fell in love with Onslow County. 
I came here in 1990, uh, being reassigned by my agency. And the first three months, I wanted to leave. But then I fell in love with the place. My kids graduated from high school and went on to ECU and et cetera. So this is home to me. Um, I'm married to a North Carolina girl. Um, and she definitely does not want to leave. Um, I have a lot of friends in this community. I work with the law enforcement community. And my big thing is, what you see is what you get. I have a desire to represent the citizens. I have a desire to listen to what you're having to say, not talk to you, but to listen, discuss openly, and to get to know you better and to know your issues and do the best I can for the citizens of this county, because this is now my county as well. So vote for me, please. I'd Thank very you. much appreciate it. Thank you. I first of all want to thank everybody for uh, being here because you, the citizens, are, if we're elected, we answer to you. Uh, I would ask you, more importantly than support, I would ask you for your prayers. Uh, not just for me, but for each person that's up here because, you know, you really put a lot into this. And uh, I believe that everybody's heart is truly where it needs to be at. Um, I can assure you, if I am elected, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see if we can get a grant to get some radars for our sheriff's department. Uh, I wasn't going to go there, but being somebody mentioned radars three times, uh, I assure you we're going to go ahead and see if we can help you with that, Sheriff. Um, but, you know, I asked, I asked you for your support along with your prayers. Uh, you know, this is a great county, uh, and our county uh, is going forward. I have four children here in the public school system, um, and I want my children to have a, a future here in Onslow County. I ask you uh, to help me uh, allow that possible. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Price. Thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Uh, you know, just the fact that you showed up shows a deeper level of concern you know, that you want to be involved. And, and that's what I wanted to do is get involved. Two years ago, I made a commitment to get involved in the, at the local level, at the precinct level, you know, to get involved and become active and, and try to give feedback to uh, officials to let them know what we at the local level wanted. And so that kind of lit the fire in me to become involved and, and to step out and out of my comfort zone, not necessarily something that I'm comfortable doing, and, and get involved and, and try, to, try to make some change, to impact some change for the betterment of Onslow County. You know, I have a daughter who's a teacher at Hunters Creek Elementary, and my wife's uh, involved in schools as well. You know, we're invested in this community and uh, we want to make a difference, and I appreciate your vote on uh, March 15th. Like, like so many others here, we, we chose to make Onslow County our home. We love this place. I've got two kids. They're teachers. They marry teachers. All four of them teach here in Onslow County, and my grandchildren are here, and I probably need to go buy me a burial plot here in Onslow County because here I, here I am. <laughs> Um, I want to offer my business experience to the board. I've, as I said, I've been involved with a successful small business for 28 years. Um, I'm going to make two promises tonight. I'm going to make a promise to you that my door will always be open. My cell phone will always be available, both at home and, and at work, and my, and my email will be available. So I will always be available to listen. The second promise I make is that I will never, ever vote for a pay raise for myself. And I ask for your support on March 15th. Thank you. I'm sorry. Mr. Keep forgetting. Keep forgetting. Uh, this is a, a Republican primary, but as we probably, most of you are involved and you've seen the last few elections, whoever wins the Republican primary is going to win the general election. So, uh, and we get elected by loyal Republicans. And so I represent that crowd very well. I'm a loyal Republican, and I'm even willing to, two of my greatest traits is loyalty and humility. I'm willing to put my opinions aside in order to build a strong team. And strong teams are not built by strong opinions. Uh, sometimes you have to put your own opinions aside, and I'm capable of doing that and submitting to the, to the team. This is a Republican primary. Let's vote for Republicans. Mr. Bennett. I want to take a moment to thank my family and my friends for, for being here and all of you for being here today. I, I want to end with my vision for Onslow County. I, this is my vision for Onslow County. This is my one-year-old granddaughter, okay? And she's the future of Onslow County. And I want you to know my son and my daughter, and, and, and they married and their, their spouses 
They graduated from high school here, and they were forced to leave Onslow County to find a living wage. Uh, so what we need to do in Onslow County is we need to provide uh, an opportunity for our kids and our grandkids to be able to stay here and work and earn a living wage. And that will be my vision for Onslow County if you'll elect me a county commissioner. I would appreciate your support. You can go to www.votefororoyce.com to find out more about me. And I thank you all for being here. I hope you have a good evening. Mr. Butcher, you get the last closing statement of the night. <laughs> thank you, sir. As I look around the room, I say these words proudly. We the people, for the people, by the people. It's going to take all the citizens of Onslow County to shape our county and make it the future that we want. This county needs a leader, and I am very proud and humble to be that leader. And I will do so with honor, courage, and commitment. Thank you, sir. Thank you. At eight. That, I'm going to turn it over to Lorette Ligon, the president of the Jacksonville Onslow Chamber of Commerce. Thank you very much, Elliot. And thank you for the candidates for joining us tonight. This right here shows how much this means to you to show up like this. Audience, your decorum has been nothing short of amazing, so I want you to take this time and clap and hoop and holler for your favorite candidate. <laughs> I again want to thank our corporate sponsor, Duke Energy, our media sponsor, The Daily News, and our partners, the City of Jacksonville and the City of Jacksonville Media Services. Thank you to the Deputy Director of the Jacksonville Onslow Economic Development, Dan Oliver, who is also our Chair of our Governmental Affairs Committee, our moderator, Mr. Elliot Potter, and our new addition, Sandra Gilmer, for keeping Elliot on point. <laughs> to a point. Um, our operations manager, Janet Bowen, that has been running this program for probably 10 to 11 years. Our timekeeper, business services manager, Anna Davin. Chamber staff members, Melissa Mahoney and Sabrina Thomas. Now, if anyone missed any part of the forum, just check the local listings for G10 and you'll see the broadcast dates and time. And lastly, remember, your vote does count. One-stop voting begins on Thursday, March the 3rd, and runs through Saturday, March 12th. Election day is March the 15th. Thank you for being here, and we stand adjourned. Yeah.